second. Which is? Second by Councilwoman Johnson. The uh, motion uh, for clarity purposes is to say, accept the economic package, economic package uh, of the union. It was uh, moved by Councilman Carlisle, seconded by Councilwoman Johnson. So just to clarify, that's at 4%, correct? 4%, okay. And no Okay. No, it doesn't, it would, so we need to clarify that because the package reads 4%, with a rollover of hazard pay in FY23 and FY24. The clarifying language is because if you roll up hazard pay, there is no hazard pay to be included in FY24. Let me go back to you and adjust the call. So if you have 2% hazard pay and you roll it up and it's not existent, the language in the last best offer before you says to roll over hazard pay. There would be no hazard pay to roll over. So it's not 4%, it would be 4% in FY23 and 2% in FY24. That is why it was clarifying language. Okay. Attorney, Attorney Wade, could, we, um, could you come and pine on that? I'm sorry to put you on the spot, but we know uh, that you're always ready. <laughs> My brain's back here, so I don't have to say anything. <laughs> So the, the, the question um, uh, before this body, so the total economic package offered by the union, um, well, proposed by the union is 4%, which includes the hazard pay being rolled into it. The language of the uh, signed document um, by both parties says 4% in the second fiscal year, but it also has the language as the hazard pay is being rolled into it. The problem, the problem with that, and this is when it gets I won't say hyper technical, but more more technical than it should be, is the fact that there may not be hazard pay in the second year, but the language of the written document still says four percent in both years. So, could you opine on whether, if this body moves to accept the total economic package of the labor union, will we be, will we be voting for four percent, which includes the hazard pay rolled in and the base pay, and will it be four percent in the second year? Um, or will it be 2% in the second year because technically there would, no, there would not be any hazard pay in the second year? That's a lot. Okay, the, am I on? The um, specific language would control over the general. So even though it has 4% in the second year, it, the intent of the parties was that it include a rollover, of which there is none. So you can't disregard the rollover language and just give 4% that second year. You have to give effect to that language, which means that if it doesn't roll over, there isn't any. So you would be 4%, 2%. That means no or a 0.5 increase in hazard pay is included on the city's total economic package. Okay, so I'm gonna ask one question and then I think I just opened up a can of worms. So my question, um, to, to clarify what Attorney Wade just said, so the total economic package offered by the union in the first fiscal year uh, before us is 4%, which includes a 2%, well, which includes a hazard pay rollover that gets us at 4%. The second year on this before this body, it says 4%, and it was intended that a 2% uh, rollover of hazard pay will be included. The problem with that, which makes it problematic, is the fact that there is no hazard pay in the second year. So it's effectively, it brings it down to 2%. So that's where we are now. So my statement or question, um, I guess we'll go to Mr. DeWitt. Um, yeah. If you would, just, just, just speak to that can and I, then- Can I speak to that for a moment? Absolutely. If you guys would please turn to, uh, the, you have the impasse ordinance in front of you, okay? And I know that Mr. Wade is, is very practiced in law, and, and I know that you trust his opinion, but I want you to read some language real quick for me. It says the council shall act only as this is part G. It's on the pages aren't numbered. Number three is arbitration procedures for resolving impasses over a total economic package. Okay? Are you all there? All right. If you go down to G, it says the council shall act only as far, far, final arbiter of impasse between the city and the employee organizations and may not negotiate with either the city or the organizations or all, it, it's not worded very well, I think it's a mistake, all for the economic package of any party.
party impasse, you know, and so we can't sit here and negotiate, renegotiate what we got. Uh, I think what Miss, I think what, what she's doing here, she's still arguing her point, but the impasse committee delineated the offers of the city and of the administration. It says that here in F. There's not a page okay. number. Not a page number. You must choose the last best offer one of the parties, and you should. And it delineates the recommendation of the council shall delineate the total economic package requested by each unit compared to the total economic package proposed by the mayor. The total economic package, as presented in the documents that I got, show a four percent increase on wage rates. That is what the committee recommended. That is the intent. Mr. Adams is not here to talk about intent. Ms. Hyman was not at the table. I'm telling you what the intent was, 4%, all the way. We talked about it and we shook on it. It was 2% wage increase. Okay, okay, We're, let, let, let's, let's, let's not argue um, between each other. Speak to this body. Yeah, no, no, I was clarifying. The city Point of inquiry. Was a 2% wage increase and a 2% okay. rollover package. So clearly we don't have a meeting of the minds or we don't have a meeting of the minds today, but I'm gonna go to uh, some of the council members Point and get them to opine on it. Councilman Carlisle. Thank you, Chair. So I'm not an attorney, so I'm not gonna get, and I'm not gonna litigate this. What I am gonna do is ask a very simple question because I, I think generally this body wants to ensure that Crafts understood and IBEW understand that they're appreciated. But I know that there have been times where the council, and no offense to Mr. Witt or Ms. Hyman, will fix this in budget wrap up, whatever we agree to, which is why I have never understood why we go through the impasse process. It is a Super Bowl of, not you, Mr. Witt, but every time we've gone through it, just a whole bunch of him and hawing that takes about three days and several hours that can all be fixed in wrap up. So, Attorney Wade. I understand that we need to render a decision in order to give the finance department and the chief operating officer time to prepare the budget by budget wrap up. Can can we delay this issue or can we can we get this fixed until uh, some other time? I mean, we've got budget wrap up on Wednesday. We can readjourn if we need to, but but this is not going anywhere fast. And so it seems like it either needs to be fixed between the parties or we can fix this in budget wrap up. Okay, let, you've, you've hit a, something that probably nobody has focused on. This vote merely adds a line item to the budget. It is not final. You can, and it says in H, if we're gonna look at the ordinance, which I had a hand in drafting, so I should know what it says. Uh, it basically says it shall become effective and shall be subject to funding by the city council in an approved budget. So it's always been this was this was intended this was intended to avoid if you if you notice that when you get to the final uh, meeting you're given 15 minutes. It used to be an hour. This was to condense their presentation at the last budget, okay? And so this item is added as a line item and you can wrap up or in final vote, decide you want to delete it, to do whatever we okay. want to do. Uh, now, to speak to Mr. DeWitt's language, you don't negotiate it. We aren't negotiating. They bring it to you. They create it. We interpreted what it means and I didn't, I didn't create it. I wasn't there. They bring this ambiguous thing in there, so you use rules of construction to determine how you interpret it, and that's what I did. Chairman, I yield the floor. Thank you, um, Councilman Carlisle. Um, yeah. So I just, what I would suggest is this body just take a vote and do exactly what Councilman Carlisle says. If, if we think it's an issue, we fix it in budget wrap up. And that way, call the question, but, Mr. Chair. Just to renew the motion, and just to again, I'll, I'll put the motion back on the table. Move to accept the impasse committee's recommendation to accept uh, IBW and Crafts proposal. Last best offer. 
Second. Second. There's a motion by Councilman Carlisle, seconded by Dr. Warren. All right, Madam Chair. Thank you very kindly, Madam Comptroller. Please clear the screen so we may cast our votes on this impasse item. <coughs> We're just getting started. We haven't gotten good stuff. Canelli, yes. Carlisle, yes. Easter Thomas, yes. Ford, yes. Johnson, yes. Jones, yes. Logan, yes. Morgan abstained. Smiley, yes. Warren, yes. Chairwoman Swearingen, yes. This item passed. <laughs> Let's go to our add-on agenda items, please. <laughs>